Hello, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Persephone Books, which is one of my favourite independent publishing companies. And I'm going to be sharing 10 of my very favourite Persephone books with you all. I'm often asked to recommend Persephone books, so if you're interested in Persephone books or you already know them but you'd like some new recommendations, then I hope you'll find my suggestions suggestions useful. For those of you who don't know Persephone books already, then you're definitely in for a treat. It's one of my favourite publishing companies. It was founded in 1998 by Nicola Bowman. And Persephone for the most part, republish books that are by women or about women. And they republish forgotten or neglected classics that were originally generally published in the first half of the 20th century. They have lovely grey and cream covers, but with really colourful end papers that are different in every book. So they're very distinctive looking and really beautiful on the shelves. If you've seen some of my other YouTube videos, then you'll have noticed the sort of wall of grey and cream titles behind me, and those are my Persephone books. I actually worked at Persephone books for several months, quite a few years ago, before I went into teaching, so in my sort of like early to mid-twenties, and I bought a lot of Persephone books at the time when I was working there and I've just gradually added to my collection since then. So I've read a lot of their titles, it was hard to narrow this down to 10 favourites but I hope that this will give you a nice taster of Persephone books anyway. As well as the sort of classic grey and cream covers, Persephone also publish some series in what they call the classic titles and with the classics they've um, brought out another edition with a coloured cover. Um, these are always also published in the grey editions but the classics are essentially Persephone's best-selling books and they've also brought out some of those with beautiful um, pictorial covers as well which are really nice. Uh, if you're new to Persephone books, then it's often quite a good idea to start with one of their classic titles. And they're a little bit cheaper as well, I think um, these are £10 and these are £13 in the shop, because Persephone have their office as well as a shop at a lovely um, place in Bloomsbury on Lamb's Conduit Street. So if you're in London, I definitely recommend popping by there because it's really stunning and you can look at all of the books as well. But let's get started with 10 of my very favourite Persephone books. So the first one that I want to tell you about is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. This was the very first Persephone book I read. I think I was probably about 20 at the time and I'd read about this book in another book. It was India Knight's book The Shops which I absolutely loved and in that book India shares so many recommendations of sort of all of her favourite things and she mentioned Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day in that book and it really intrigued me. So I tracked it down and I was at university in Bloomsbury anyway, I started going to Persephone Books a lot and <laughs> buying books, I was really charmed by the whole idea of it and by the books I was reading. But Miss Pettigrew was my very first one and I still recommend it to people who are wondering which Persephone book to read first. I think this is a great introduction to them. It's, pro it's probably quite a bit lighter than a lot of the typical Persephone titles but it really is a wonderful read and the perfect sort of comfort read. It's about um, a woman, Miss Pettigrew, who is considered one of the surplus women who found it so hard to get married after World War One, and she's forced to work as a nursery governess for lots of different sort of middle class families and she hates the employment and is really living a very sort of drab and quite unhappy life. But 
In a fortunate mistake, her agency sends her to the wrong address when she thinks she's going to be taking up a new position as a nursery governess. But in fact, she ends up going to the wrong place, to the flat of a very glamorous young woman. And this young woman thinks that Miss Pettigrew is there for the job of a maid. And this is a real comedy of errors, this book. Um, it's very funny. And Miss Pettigrew sort of takes on this sort of role as a maid um, for for Miss Lafosse, I think her name is, and um, lots of merriment and misunderstandings happen from that, but also Miss Pettigrew gets sort of taken over by Miss Lafosse and she gets her hair done, her makeup done, she's really transformed and it's quite a Cinderella story and I love it because it's about two women who are very, very different from each other, but who both end up learning from each other and both helping each other a lot. Miss Pettigrew finds romance at the end of this book too, and it really is just such a sweet, entertaining story. I highly recommend this one. It was also made into a film starring Amy Adams and Frances McDormand, so you might have seen that. And the film is fun, but it's honestly nowhere near as good as the book. The book is so worth a read, so I really recommend this one. And then, this is one of my very favourite books of all time, I think. It's Little Boy Lost by Marganita Lasky. And one of the reasons I like Persephone books so much is they've introduced me to so many wonderful authors. Marganita Lasky is definitely one of them, as is Dorothy Whipple. But Marganita Lasky is, I think, my favourite writer that has been republished by Persephone and I think this is her strongest book. It's set just after World War II and it's about a man called Hilary who has lost his wife um, during the war, she died in France, and his son went missing in France and was presumed dead. But after the war uh, Hilary finds out that actually perhaps his son is still alive and there's a possibility that he's um, this young boy who's been described to him who's been taken into a convent in France. Now much as this is a story about Hilary finding this boy, finding out whether this boy is his or not or even if that matters, the real boy who is lost in this book is Hilary himself. Um, he isn't always a particularly likeable character, but you feel such sympathy for him and such understanding. But this novel is a real page turner, partly because you're just so anxious about the decisions that Hilary makes and you're just really worried she's going to make a terrible mistake or not be as good a person as you want him to be. It's it's such a human story, this one. I mean, Marguerite Lasky, I think, is so skilled in drawing um, very believable characters in that way. It's also a really moving examination of what France um, and Paris looked like after World War II. Um, really sort of fascinating detail around that but the ending oh it just it guts you it really does I mean this this story does put you through the ringer but it's just it's a story that will stay with you forever I think so Little Boy Lost a little uh, uh, rare in the Persephone canon because it really follows a man a man's story rather than a woman's story but yes, I think Marguerite Delasky is a wonderful writer, and if you haven't read this, then you should. Next, another quite light-hearted book that's a real favourite of mine. Again, a lovely comfort read. This is Mariana by Monica Dickens. Now, this story is tinged with some sadness, and in fact, it starts with um, Mary, who's the heroine of the book, 
and she's waiting for news of her husband um who is fighting during world war ii and he does and she doesn't know if he is safe or if he is even alive or not and while she's waiting to hear of some news she thinks back to her childhood and this story really is tinged with nostalgia and a lot of people compare it to books like I Capture the Castle and The Pursuit of Love and if you like those books then I would definitely recommend this one. It's another coming of age story of a young girl and it's really brilliantly done. There's so much period detail of the sort of 1930s that's really interesting in this book. I really enjoyed it for that reason but also Mary is a very likeable heroine and um, she has faults that I think anyone can understand and there are little quirks to her personality that I find quite endearing. For instance at one point she's worried that she's a bit too plump and so she starts doing all of these sort of exercises in her bedroom and like slims down and is very proud of herself. <laughs> um, but it, the the story takes you sort of through Mariana's schooling to her young womanhood. Um, she goes for a year to Paris and uh, falls in love with a Frenchman, but ends up settling down with someone very sensible who really appreciates Mariana for who uh, Mary for who she is. And yeah, it's a lovely story. I definitely recommend this one. Okay, I've already talked about Dorothy Whipple. Um, Persephone Books have published all of her novels and um, I think all, or at least surely the majority of her short stories as well. And they're also publishing her diary or journal that's called Random Commentary. That's going to be published in uh, this autumn. So I'm really looking forward to that because I read Random Commentary in January. I'd got it from the London Library and I loved it. So I'm really excited that they are republishing that. Someone at a Distance was Dorothy Whipple's last novel and I think that it actually probably is her strongest. Though I also like High Wages by her a lot. I think she's an incredibly skillful writer and I'm so pleased that Persephone Books have republished all of her novels. She was someone who was very popular in her own lifetime but um, I, her work wasn't always appreciated I think perhaps in the way um, that it should have been. Virago sort of famously said um, of of books they weren't published that they were sort of below the Whipple line and they famously didn't publish Dorothy Whipple. Um, but I think that that was really undeserved. She's a really very, very good writer. She's so good on psychology and um, there's such depths of character to her uh, to her heroines, which I really, really enjoy. Someone at a Distance is about the breakup of a marriage, um, a seemingly very happy marriage, when a sort of an outsider, a French girl, um, comes into a household and she disrupts this happy marriage between El Ellen and her husband, Avery. Um, Louise, who's the French girl, is a very sort of madam. Bovary style character and this is just a very interesting novel about human behaviour, about the fragility of love but also it is also about the endurance of love as well and I think it would be a really good introduction. It was the first Dorothy Whipple book that I read and I think it is a very good introduction to her work so Someone at a Distance is definitely worth a read. Then funnily enough because so many people think of Persephone Books as such a British um, publishing company but many of my very favourites of theirs are actually by American authors that they have republished. I have a few coming up but this is um, the first one, it's The Homemaker by Dorothy Canfield Fisher who was an American writer 
and this is a wonderful book on um, stereotypes surrounding um, childcare and also what being a homemaker really means. Um, this book is about a mother who frankly hates um, the housework involved in um, tending her children, tending her house, staying at home and her husband is also deeply unhappy, he's a very poetic intellectual soul, soul and he's working in a, in a department store and absolutely hates the job. He has an accident that leaves him in a wheelchair so their roles are actually reversed and he has to stay at home and look after the children while his wife goes to work. And so much happiness ends up coming from this. Their marriage was quite troubled before, um, the wife was working herself up into being a completely neurotic housewife, she was so unhappy and was getting sort of terrible eczema, the children were quite nervous around her, and when he in fact ends up becoming the main um, carer at home, everything changes, he is so good at looking after the children, he's much happier being at home and the wife is much happier going out and working, they both find fulfilment in these different ways and are both able to be better parents as well as better um, partners, a better husband and wife because of it. It's interesting in that it looks at the sort of Montessori method of teaching and child rearing and yes I think this was such an unusual book for its time but its message is still so relevant today and I really recommend this one. Then one of the Persephone thrillers, this is a real page turner, again it's by an American author, it's The Blank Wall by Elizabeth Sanxay Holding. This was actually also made into a film called The Deep End, um, charge, uh, starring Tilda Swinton, I think it's called The Deep End, it's either called In The Deep or The Deep End, <laughs> I always get that um, muddled, but I think it's The Deep End, which is an amazing film by the way, um, but they changed the plot of this book quite a bit. Um, this is set in the States and again this is a book really about motherhood and also protecting your family and the lengths that this mother in the book will go to protect her family. Um, it's about the death, the suspicious death of her daughter's boyfriend and the mother ends up having to sort of try and cover this up but blackmail comes into this story, honestly there's so much that really keeps you turning the pages. This is also set during World War Two, so it's more poignant and the woman in it really has to fend for herself because her husband is away at the war and she has to deal with these terrible circumstances alone and make very big decisions um, regarding the family alone as well. This is such a good read, slight, but it will it will really keep you gripped. So yes, The Blank Wall is definitely one to add to your list. Then another American author, The Expendable Man by Dorothy B. Hughes. This is another of my very, very favourite Persephone books. I was really astounded when I read it the first time and it really made me pause and question um, my own presumptions about the sort of types of character who are the lead protagonists in this sort of novel and especially this kind of novel set um, when written from this time period. This is set in Arizona in the 1960s. I don't want to say too much about the plot because I think you really need to come to this book without knowing too much about it, that's where a lot of the power of this story lies, but again this is a bit of a thriller, it's a real page turner, it's about a young man, a young doctor who is driving by car from uh, California to Arizona to attend his niece's wedding. His family is clearly sort of very well to do, he's driving an expensive car, but there are various incidents um, on this road trip that make him 
mm, really quite nervous and you're not sure why he's so nervous and then all becomes revealed a little bit later but yes I so recommend this book to to everybody I know I think it's a brilliant read and I would add this one to your pile too and then another American author <laughs> and that is Susan Glassville. Now she wrote two really great books that Persephone have republished. This is one of them, Brooke Evans, and then there's another one called Fidelity that I absolutely love as well. I mean, I like it just as much as Brooke Evans, so it is really hard for me to choose between these, and I'd really recommend getting Fidelity as well. Susan Glassville's novels were truly shocking for their times. They were, I think they were both written in the early 1920s, and um, in it, in both books, she deals with um, illicit love. In Fidelity, she talks about a woman who falls in love with a married man, and in this book, she examines um, having a child outside of wedlock and all of the ramifications of that. And they're just two really extraordinary reads. They're still very heart hitting, I think, even today. And Glassville is another really skilled writer. Okay, and then back to the English authors. This is Guard Your Daughters by Diana Tutton. This is such an interesting book as well. Um, it's about five sisters who live at home. Well, one of the sisters has actually just married, so it's just four sisters living at home. Um, and they have quite a strange relationship with their mother who is shown as being very neurotic, although um, it's actually quite a bit darker than that. But in some ways it reminds me of Pride and Prejudice, partly because of it's a story about five sisters. But also it's like Pride and Prejudice, but with Mrs. Bennet given an even sort of darker twist to her. Um, there is a real theme of of madness and female madness running through this book which is really interesting but that's sort of darker side to it and there's another side that it is actually just a really light-hearted entertaining funny read and it reminds me a lot of I Capture the Castle in that it's also sort of about an eccentric English family you know, it's very much of that kind of genre of writing so this is such a great read and yeah if you like I Capture the Castle then th this one should definitely be on your list. And then finally I wanted to talk about the Persephone short stories because I think uh, another thing that's special about Persephone books is that they've published so many brilliant collections of short stories. And it was really hard for me to choose just one collection because they've done so many. They've republished lots of Dorothy Whipple's short story collections, which are wonderful. Um, they've also done, I wanted to show this one to you too, the Persephone book of short stories. And they've also done um, a second volume of Persephone short stories, which are also both really good. And they feature lots of Persephone authors um, in these collections. I love short stories, so I really like the fact that Persephone published so many collections of short stories. But for this video, I especially wanted to highlight the Montana stories by Catherine Mansfield. I think Mansfield is an amazing writer. Persephone have also republished her journal, which I really like reading. And if you're interested in reading journals written by writers, then I really recommend that one but her short stories are dazzling. And this collection has some of my favourites in it. Yes, it has The Garden Party, Her First Ball, and A Cup of Tea. It's one of my very favourites. I think I chose A Cup of Tea as a Tea Reads episode on my Tea and Tattle podcast once. If I didn't, I know I wanted to, so I can't remember if I did or if I just um, thought 
was thinking about it. But anyway, it's one of my favourite short stories, really worth reading. If I have done it as a tea reads, then I'll link it down below, but definitely try to read it. It's such an interesting short story. And yeah, but this is a great collection on the whole. But anyway, those are my top 10 favourite Persephone books, or at least 10 of my favourites, because actually I think it's hard to narrow it down to just 10. So I'm sure I'll be doing lots more videos about Persephone books in the future, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Do let me know if you're a fan of Persephone books, what your favourite Persephone titles are, if you like any of the ones that I've mentioned on here, if you're keen to read any of the ones that I've talked about, do let me know, because I'd love to hear from you. But also, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, give it a thumbs up if you did, and please do subscribe to my channel, which you can do by clicking on my face, I think will pop up somewhere here or here, <laughs> somewhere on here. But anyway, I'll be back again very soon with another video. Bye.